who did, but on Tuesday, the chief election officer, Keith Lowenfield, submitted a report to GCOM in which he apparently erased over 115,000 votes from uh, the March 2nd election. Well, PPPC presidential candidate, Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali, was with us last week. He joins us now to give us some more context to the situation. Uh, Dr. Ali, assalamu alaikum. Good to have you with us uh, once more. Uh, what is the situation now from the perspective of the PPP Civic? Walaikum well, assalam, and thank you uh, for having me on your program uh, once more. Well, uh, you would have rightfully captured where we are now. What we have in Guyana is the chief election officer who is really on roll. The recount, as you're aware, was agreed upon by all stakeholders. All stakeholders uh, in these elections agreed on the recount after the district number four or region number four results uh, were deemed not credible or fraudulent. Um, so the international stakeholders, uh, all the international observers, the political parties, GCOM, everyone agreed to this recount. Um, and the recount was supervised by CARICOM. So let me go through with you uh, the findings from this recount. The recount uh, found that the People's Progressive Party, in keeping with the statement of poll that we produced, uh, won, the, won the March 2nd election by more than 15,000 votes. In the recount report itself, Lewinfield uh, addressed the issue of valid votes. There is a sheet in Lewinfield, in Lewinfield report, a page that gives a summary of the recount results. And in the summary of the recount results, there is a column that says total valid votes, 460,352,000. ,000. And based on those total valid votes, the People's Progressive Party Civic would have won the elections. However, the Chief Election Officer proceeded to present a report uh, to the Chair of GCOM that he's required to do with totally different figures, showing the reverse, that the AFNO AFC uh, would have won the elections. As bizarre as it is, all the international agencies, because we are part of the global community, we are part of a global village, CARICOM itself came out with a very strong statement to its uh, cha chairwoman, Prime Minister Motley, but the OS, the OS had some very strong words to say also. The OS made clear that they were present throughout the process of the recount. They were present uh, during the tabulation of every region. And GCOM is in the possession of result, results from the recount based on valid votes. The recount exercise was approved by all stakeholders. And the OS went on to say, that these are the figures, the recount figure must be used to declare the results of the March 2nd election. The, the father went on to say that the process must, brought, must be brought to an immediate end and, the, and all stakeholders must respect the will of the majority of the electorate. In their statement too, they said that if there is any party who feel aggrieved, they can, of course, go address this through an election petition. So that is what the OS said in a nutshell in their statement. Uh, and before you, before you continue, uh, <coughs> Dr. Ali, if, uh, of course, uh, they, they, I know it can, it's, it's a, a very, a, a lots of detail that tied into this entire issue. But I suppose for our audience, not just here in Trinidad and Tobago, but I'm sure the many Guyanese nationals who will be following this very closely, who are based in Trinidad and Tobago, those who are following online back in Guyana where you are and indeed throughout the world and our region specifically, will be asking themselves, what happens next? Because the matter is now before the CCJ, which is the final court of appeal for the Cooperative Republic of Guyana. So f from that pos position, what happens next? And the reason I frame the question this way is because I'm reading the Guyana Chronicle this morning in which senior counsel John Jeremy, who former Attorney General of Trinidad and Tobago, who represented the matter from Ms. Eslyn David that was heard last weekend, says that statements are being made by persons outside of this court 
with considerable influence in the region which impact on the decision of the Court of Appeal and which have the potential to impact on the decision of the court. So indeed, so aren't you and indeed others prejudicing the work of the CCJ by these utterances? Not at all. Uh, I think the CCJ is a professional outfit. Uh, the, uh, the CCJ is an independent outfit. What I am just presenting to you, uh, Mr. Mohammed, is a statement from international agencies, the OAS, the Commonwealth, CARICOM, the uh, ABC EU countries. Those are independent statements and independent views on the March 2nd elections because they were also part of the process. We can't escape these statements because these statements are already in the public domain in relation to uh, what took place uh, when Keith Lowenfield submitted a false report. So these statements are already out there. So I, hear, I hear you on that. Summarizing uh, uh, the statement, sure. I don't think it uh, prejudices anything. Okay. Because the, the, uh, I think we, we must have respect for regional institutions, uh, their independence and their ability to act uh, fairly. I hear you on so, that. So, uh, if, if you would allow me to ask the question. So, let me, let me just restate my question because I, I probably didn't, didn't state it properly. From your perspective, uh, as the presidential candidate for the PPP Civic, what happens next? Is it a matter now of, of waiting for the CCJ to rule on this matter? Well, well, yeah, after the CCJ uh, rules on the matter, it goes back to GCOM, to uh, the, the commission. And, of course, the commission will have to act. The chairwoman has... Uh, uh, has some uh, leeway in the Constitution as to what has to be done the Commission. So that, that is what has to ha happen, and the report has to be submitted with, uh, in accordance with the recount, and the declaration has to be made and then a swearing. And uh, as we, we talk about how the situation, which has basically been rumbling on since March the 2nd, and indeed, as you had mentioned in our discussion last week, since with the, the no confidence vote in December of 2018, how destabilizing is all of this to the population of Guyana as far as people being able to go about their daily business in expectation of a stable political environment? Well, of course, a stable political environment is important for many aspects of national life. So not only uh, is this affecting the private sector and the economy of our country, but in this pandemic, it has really limited our ability to tackle the pandemic in a, in, in a very strategic manner. There is no focus uh, by the government. We in the opposition would have done more in this pandemic than the, the government itself. There is no focus. We are without a budget for uh, more than more than six months now. The budget is overdue, so we are without a parliament. Uh, so these are the things that you know contribute to national life and ensuring that a country remains stable. But more, much more than this is the international damage, the damage of the country's credibility, the damage of uh, in terms of our investment climate. I'm sure that the sophisticated investors looking in would say. What is really going on over there when the constitution cannot be respected the rule of law cannot be respected um you know when the will of the people is being thwarted uh, you know people ask questions the investors would ask questions and it does uh, damage the credibility of guyana so i think that we have an immediate task of working on restoring that credibility restoring the confidence in guyana ensuring that people uh you know, have the confidence in the rule of law, the constitution, uh, the will of the people are respected in this country, so that people can be can invest confidence in our country. We have an amazing future ahead. We have many opportunities in a diversified portfolio of uh, economic and, and financial opportunities, business opportunity, and we have to get this right. I'd, I'd like to get your, your to perspective on that as well, uh, Dr. Ali, but uh, in fact, as to whether or not uh, this, this intensity uh, of, of, of competition in this election has everything to do with the revenues that will be coming from oil eventually. But before I ask that question, uh, you, you made the point about the rule of law. Isn't it correct to also say, from the position of the APNU and AFC, that their representatives and their citizens and their supporters also 
need, need, need to, to, to have their voice, whether it be in the courts or, or any other uh, forum for jurisprudence, because wasn't it the, the, the matter brought forward by Ms. Eslyn David, uh, on, uh, uh, obviously a supporter of the APNU AFC, that got the majority vote of the Supreme Court of Guyana by two to one, got that majority vote last weekend. So uh, it wouldn't it be correct to say that the APNU AFC are also following due process of law? Well, let me say what is correct to say is that every citizen must be afforded equal rights in our country. Every citizen must have the democratic right and recourse to different arms uh, of, the gov of the government. But <clears throat> I think you are missing an important fact. And that is, this has not really started only on March the 2nd. There was a no confidence that was passed in Guyana almost more than a year and a half ago. The Constitution makes it very clear that three months after the passage of a no confidence motion, we have to go to the elections. We are one and a half year, one and a half year later, we did not go to those elections. We did not follow the Constitution. The PPP civic and the people of Guyana had to fight through the courts to ensure that the Constitution was honored. And still, after we had a uh, judgment from the CCJ, we still had to wait for those elections. We have a process in the Constitution that allows for the selection of the chair of the Elections Commission, in which the leader of the opposition submits six names, and the, and the president would select one of the six. We submitted three lists, 18 names. The president rejected all 18 of those names, although some of those names were on his list. But we thought the persons were fair. We had to go, <clears throat> and, and let me make it clear, the president selected a chair of the commission outside of the 18 names. We had to go all the way to the CCJ to set aside that decision. So these are the things that we have been going through, and I speak about the breach, the, the breach of the Constitution and the rule of law. These are the things that, that we have been going through. It's not only uh, since March the 2nd. So yes, I agree with you, all citizens, and we support that. That is why we said, the OS said, the ABCEU said, CARICOM said, Co the Commonwealth Secretariat said that there is there, the course of action for any affected party is to go to an election petition. That is, every party has that democratic right to go to an election petition. But what we have seen, what we have seen here, and this is where this is this is what we have to understand. What we are seeing here is an attempt to, to steal these elections. And, and on March the second, district number four uh, tabulation. I, I, every I, I, single I, yeah. observer said it was uh, not credible and fraudulent. I, and I know that, that region, recount, those, those region the four recount, numbers are, are very important. Reform the figures the People's Progressive Party Civic would have made public through a statement of poll. And here we are still today, not having the legitimate government or president sworn in. I, but, I, as yeah. I said, uh, Mr. Mohammed, on a yes. previous uh, show, notwithstanding all of this, there's a human aspect. And this has indeed created uh, undue tension. It has created unease in our society. It has created mistrust. It has created uh, division. And as someone who uh, would lead the next government and the next government itself, I see this as an important responsibility. Uh, the, the most important of all the responsibilities to bring healing, to bring our country together, to ensure that every single guy is a part of the development platform to ensure that the, the developmental trust of the country is in the interests of every Guyanese and everyone feel as if they are part of the future and they can achieve their aspirations uh, under this uh, under, under government.
And, and before we conclude, Dr. You asked a question about revenue, yes. whether uh, it is because of the oil revenue. I would want to say that any election anywhere in the world is competitive. Is competitive. We were in government without oil and gas. We built the Ghana economy without oil and gas. We were in government when the, the, the country was bankrupt. We came into government in 1992 when we had nothing. The international, there was no international reserves. The average lending rate for housing was close to 40%. The average lending rate for commercial loans was more than 37%. We built the economy. We brought all of that down to one of the most aggressive housing programs. One uh, to, to a situation where we became net exporters for various uh, agricultural uh, uh, products and produce. Doctor, I'll leave you alone with yeah, because well. because time is against us. And I, I know that there, there are a lot of different issues that you could highlight with the work uh, of the PPP Civic when, when it's first iteration in office. And, and hopefully in, in future discussions, we'll have the opportunity to develop them. But this is a final thought, if you would allow me to ask the question. Um, if Even if the PPP Civic were to eventually prevail and you were to be declared president of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana, wouldn't Guyana still remain fiercely divided politically along ethnic lines, which continues to hamstring the growth of your country. Just a final thought on that, please. Well, I, I would like to know that the rule of law prevails, the constitution prevails, and the will of the people prevails. This is not about air finale or the PPP civic prevailing. This is about the will of the people prevailing. This is about democracy prevailing. This is about the rule of law prevailing. That is important for any country any society and that is why the international community is so concerned it's not about an individual or a political party it is far bigger than that it's bigger than us it's about democracy and yes that is why i said because of what took place and, and what continues to take place we have an important task of healing this nation we have an important task of bringing people together and doing this requires bridging the gap of inequality Doing this requires ensuring that the economic plans, that the developmental agenda addresses the needs of every single stakeholder. That is why the govern governance structure that I would like to pursue and the PP Civic would like to pursue is one that is inclusive, inclusive of ideas, inclusive of people, not only at, at the political level, but civil society. We have a shortage of a human resource potential in the new areas of growth and development. So we have to come together to bring the best Guyanese here and in the diaspora and then in the region, in Caritas. I hear you on that, Dr. Ali, but uh, unfortunately time has run on us and I, I do appreciate you making the time to speak with us Thank this you. morning and we'll continue to follow up with you as to, I, to what I hope, this I hope uh, on one of your programs I can come if you have a, a bit more time for us to trace the political, social, and economic development of Guyana over the last 20 years, because sometimes we get carried away about this oil and gas uh, sector, which is very important for the future. But if you have a good understanding as to uh, what took place in Guyana and the growth and development that took place without oil and gas, then you will see how diversified uh, our economy is. I, I hear you on, strong a, I hear you on that. Uh, we stand on for the future. Thank I hear you, you on that, and hopefully we'll have the time to, to do it on another occasion. Thank you very much uh, for, for making the time to chat with us once again, Dr. Irfan Ali, the PPP civic candidate uh, for the presidency in Guyana, and we're still waiting to see how that matter is going to be resolved. But here are a few images uh, to take us uh, through the break. I know some of you may be getting hungry already. Our viewer says to smell the masala, uh, teaching her uh, seven, her ten year and seven year old kids how to make dry mango achar. You know, I've never really been a fan of curry mango. Really?